Kelly Marie Tran, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Um, the last time we spoke, we, we were talking about like the journey that you had had, you know, being part of Star Wars, being the face of what many felt like was like bullying online. You know, where people were like, this is part of the biggest problem that we have on social media. Since then, your life seems, seems to have been like really peachy. Before we talk about making a new Disney movie, <laughs> I want to know, as, as one of the few who's doing it, what, what, what is the world when there is no social media? It's amazing. I mean, okay, I will say this. I do have, like, a lurker account because I want to know what's going on in the news. <laughs> I want to be, like, an active citizen of the world, right? But not having to uh, constantly be sort of publicly on it is the best thing I've ever done for my mental health. I will say that, yeah. <laughs> huh. So you're saying that you don't wake up every day with people just telling you that they hate you. This is not a thing that you do. <laughs> no, no, that's not a thing that I, I do. Wow. No. I, d I don't know what that's like. I, I wake up every morning and I check and I'm like, yep, they're still there. And then I start my day. <laughs> well, now I feel like I'm going to use my lurker account just to be like, we love you. We love you. No, don't do that. Don't even do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I, I like the haters because then I go like, at least they see me. They see me. Um, <laughs> you, you, you've had an amazing journey. I mean, not being in, you know, it's not just one, not two, not three, but it's going to be like, what, four Disney movies? You're just like the Disney darling right now, it feels like. The movies Raya and The Last Dragon. Tell me a little bit about the story. I mean, I've watched it all, but I don't want to spoil anything for people. So it is about a young girl named Raya, who is technically a princess. But I think what's really cool about this movie is that we're really sort of flipping the narrative on what a princess is. She's actually really a warrior. And she comes into the world and sort of has this really idealistic way of viewing the world. And then the world breaks apart. And then she starts really distrusting everyone. The whole movie sort of is her journey on uh, figuring out how to find the good in the world again and figuring out how to trust people again. The whole story is about how the world was working and then everybody started believing that in order for them to succeed, other people have to fail. And that's when the world starts falling apart. And it feels like that's the world we live in today. What's also cool is that, you, you know, we live in a world where everybody who is generally not white, gets put into like one category. Like with Asian, it's just like, you're Asian, we're done. But what's cool about the movie is it's like, no, it, it sort of tells the story of real life where it's like, hey, this is not a monolith. This is not homogenous. There are Asian peoples. You know, obviously this story takes place with a South Asian perspective, but it is still a story about like all different people coming from the Asian sphere. You know, there was so much research done to make sure that this specific part of the world was, was honored in a really authentic way. So to be able to be part of that and, and to be able, like you said, to sort of shine a spotlight in all these really specific things, like not only are we talking about the specific fabrics that people are wearing from the different tribes, but also the type of martial arts that you're seeing depicted is specifically from this region of the world and the food and it goes on and on and on. So to be able to be part of that and recognize how I guess how important it was to Disney, it just made me really happy as, as someone who was really starved to see herself as a kid. Right. You know, when, when I was watching the movie, I was thinking, it's so amazing how, like in this film especially, Disney just hit on like all the perfect notes. So like you said, the costumes are phenomenal. The acting is amazing. Like the landscapes that we get to see of all the different places and the cultures. And then you have dragons on top of that. Like- We love dragons. Right? I mean, it feels like the perfect combination of everything but you made the movie in less than perfect circumstances. I mean, everybody was at re in like remote locations, everybody. Where were you recording your parts? Cause I, I don't think everybody was together, right? No, I actually, yeah, I really didn't get to interact with Aquafina at all until we started doing press over Zoom. So wow. a lot of, yeah, we were all completely isolated. Um, I was working out of my boyfriend's apartment and we basically, taped sound blankets to the wall and like wow. put chairs in like it was it was not glamorous <laughs> like it was fully just a makeshift fort uh in his bedroom and that's where the majority of this movie was recorded <laughs> did you did you ever have those moments because i know i have doing stuff at home where you're like trying to be really serious you're in the zone and then all of a sudden there's like a postmates or uber eats or something delivery and you have to like stop have you had any of those while filming like raya oh fully yeah deliveries and then also just like the sounds of construction outside <laughs> or the internet cutting out. Yeah, yeah. And also like 
voiceover is so weird because you have to do all these like grunting noises and screaming yes. noises. Yes. And I still live in an apartment. So I was like, my, my neighbors probably think I'm getting murdered or <laughs> I'm doing some crazy stuff. Just like doing all these crazy grunting fight sounds and screaming no at the top of my lungs, like 10 times in a row. So when you're doing this, do you just stand there stoically? Are you like, yeah, ha, ha, or do you try and do the moves as well in, in, in the room? Okay, so I fully, originally, like, always try to do the moves. Like, there's that scene at the end of the movie. I don't want to spoil too much, but, you know, it's, like, a very yes, big yes. fireman. And she's yes. got a sword, and, and she's, like... And I'm fully, like, behind the microphone, like, stabbing around me, like... <laughs> and then I would get in trouble, because I would move too far from the mic. <laughs> so then I'd have to, like, make sure I was here, and then be, like, doing this. <laughs> ha, yeah, yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> um... The movie, I feel, comes at a perfect time for, for, I mean, a number of reasons. One, we're all stuck at home. It's amazing to see, like, blockbuster movies and get to enjoy them at home. Um, two, it's, it's a beautiful film, you know, and people love Disney movies, but it's also, like, the timing of who the movie's about. You know, right now, the Asian community in America is facing one of its toughest times where hate crimes are just skyrocketing. Many, you know, prominent Asians in Hollywood saying, hey, we need to fight against this. Everybody needs to step up. And I've seen people on social media saying, let's work together to do this. What do you think the significance of a movie like this is for kids and for people who just watch movies and might have a subconscious understanding of what they're seeing? Exactly what you said. You know, when you make a movie like this, you cannot control the environment in which it's going to be released in. You have absolutely no idea what kind of world you're releasing into. So to be able to be a part of this movie right now when the news is a... Con like, you know, because I'm lurking, lurking on, on the internet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a constant barrage of attack after attack. And I know for me, like, I just really hope that this is a moment where we can come together as a community and really recognize the pride and the joy that comes with celebrating where we're from. You know, we live in a world that's telling us we need to be afraid and we need to hide and we have to be ashamed. And to be part of this movie that is so clearly celebrating instead of hiding feels like such a proud moment for me. And um, I hope that it's one that the community can celebrate. There's also another community that's gonna celebrate it on top of that. And that is gonna be women and little girls everywhere. Cause I mean, you know, one thing people have always said about Disney movies is they go like, and, and Disney themselves have made fun of it in movies like Wreck-It Ralph is where like the princess is always helpless and they're always waiting to get rescued. And you watch this movie and it's just like, no, people are just kicking ass. All different types of women, all these princesses as we know them, but it's like, no, these are warriors who just happen to be the daughter of the ruler. Yeah, which I am so stoked about. I mean, I think something that was really important to me coming into this and also really important to Disney as well is we really are really trying to change that narrative. Like, what do people think when they think of the word princess? What do people think when they think of the word hero? And you're seeing Raya and Namari and, and all these other characters. And I really do think they're sort of broadening the idea of what instinctually people think when they think of those words. And it's right. so cool to be part of that change. You're gonna carry on your life now. You're gonna be lurking online. Um, you're, yeah. you're living your life. It looks like it's treating you well. What advice would you give to, to, to young people out there who feel like they have to be on social media to stay connected with their world, but also suffer with the enduring abuse that might come their way? Yeah, I mean, I think it is, you know, a decision that everyone needs to make on their own individually. But I will also say that there are boundaries that you can set for yourself, whether that's making sure that certain words, if comments are being left on, you know, your public page, that those don't get through, mm -hmm. or time limits. You know, we've had all these documentaries talking about the addictive nature of social media and what it's right. actually doing to change our brains. We can talk about what is what is a healthy time limit for us, that we can make sure that we are engaging with our community and being active members of society, but also not having to do that at the expense of our own mental health. Right. Um, I just think it's, I think it's a good conversation for us to be having at all because it feels like for a lot of people, it's almost an expectation without a discussion. So to be able to have the discussion with yourself and with your friends and the people around you, like how can I do this productively, but also make sure that I am mentally in a place where I'm happy. Um, these are good conversations to have. Most definitely. Good conversations to have and uh, a good mental space to be in. Uh, Kelly Marie Tran, thank you so much for joining me on the show and congratulations again. Thank you.